Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments. This one is our final video in this series of videos regarding how to fix your own optical fiber runs. And as LC connectors are the ones that are most commonly used in enterprise scenarios, small companies, simple deployments and continue to gain popularity, that is exactly what we're documenting today and letting you know the experience that we have. It is not a simple task as it requires fine motor skills and I know many can do it almost with your eyes closed, well maybe the most experienced users and as always with practice the apprentice becomes the master. That could not be any more true. For the purpose of this video we're gonna be using this set of tools which includes everything that you need for cold splicing fiber. Actually a little more as it includes a fault locator and an optical power meter, very useful both of them. Also this package, which includes 5 connectors with 4 components, the terminal itself, the contact cap, the locking cap or mechanism and a very small fiber wire guide in case that you don't use the cable jacket. These particular LC connectors are UPC and might be quite interesting for you to understand the difference between UPC and APC connectors and I will leave you the links in the description for some interesting literature about it. Basically what we'll end up doing, so you'll understand the theory behind it, is to perfectly cleave your fiber, insert it into this small terminal and put it in contact with its ceramic ferrule, which is this part of the terminal that will come in contact with the sensor of the SFP module. So let's do it, let's install these connectors. As with any other mechanical splicing or termination, the key procedure here is how to prepare the fiber you're gonna fix. As a small review of our previous videos, here is a short explanation. We can, with this very simple and inexpensive set of tools, prepare the fiber, which means cutting, stripping, cleaving and terminating. So let's do it. With the three step stripper, you're gonna remove first the jacket of the fiber, trying not to bend so much the cable, nor applying too much pressure. Cut the excess Kevlar and then we move forward to our next step, which is removing the coating of the fiber. You're gonna do this using the second step of your wire stripper. A small pause right here and a friendly reminder. Keep in mind that multi-mode and single-mode fibers do have the same internal diameter. And what I mean with this is core plus cladding. The core itself is much smaller in single-mode fiber, but with the cladding, both end up having the same diameter as you can see right here. The cladding is that compound that sort of keeps light inside the glass. Fiber does have an additional coating that is the one that you're gonna remove in the third step. Contrary to what some people think, this is not the cladding, but it is actually an additional coating that is the one that lets the optical fiber bend without breaking. Once you remove it, very gently with a few passes, you can proceed to clean what we call the fiber core. You can help yourself in this procedure by using a fault locator, uh, included in the kit by the way that I just mentioned, so in an easier manner you can tell when the fiber is clean. Use a lint-free cloth with isopropylic alcohol. In the final step you're gonna cut or cleave the fiber, which is nothing more than perfectly cutting the fiber with the cleaver. It has everything that you need to give that perfect cut to the fiber. Take a look at this perfect laser beam coming out of the fiber. If I cut it with just a pair of scissors or break it, the pattern will disrupt. This is what happens typically when fiber breaks. You need to cleave and join again using the appropriate accessory. Let's install then the terminal. Here came what I particularly consider the hard part, as these came with no instructions at all. Having wasted a few of these terminals, breaking the fiber and leaving pieces inside, I found out that one of the problems was that I needed to leave the fiber at a proper length, which means that the bare fiber has to be close to 13 millimeters. More made me break them and some of these were rendered useless, as there was no way of taking the pieces out. Here once again a fault locator is very useful, but it is important to note here not to use a too powerful fault locator which may very easily melt whatever you place close to the fiber and may of course contaminate the fiber ending. Using the fault locator you can help yourself to see how once inside the connector and properly aligned, light comes perfectly through it. Also you'll notice a perfect pattern over the table. This will tell you that you are done and you have properly aligned the fiber. Also intensity, as for example right here is not properly achieved. Once you do that you can place the fiber jacket where the locking cap is gonna work 
keeping the fiber in place. That's it. It was actually no easy task. The first time I did it, I broke like five or six connectors until I figured the perfect fiber length and stripping. A mistake that I didn't foresee as I had to order, again, some more connectors to show you how you can finish this process. Well, as always, you're gonna need to invest money for your own training. You can then put your fiber optic power meter to test how much signal loss was added to your system. In my case, I ended up having 3 decibel added signal loss, which actually is too much considering that it should have read less than 1. However, for my 25 meter run of 10 gigabit per second connection over OM3, it was not noticeable. For longer runs, I would not have accepted it. I think I might have ended in this particular case, leaving a small gap inside the connector. Ok guys, thank you very much for watching this video, I really hope that it was as informative as it was intended to be, but the most important thing is that we hope that it was of great help encouraging you not only to learn, but to also take action into your fiber optic infrastructure by learning and practicing. Please don't forget that your kind subscription and liking this video is your support to our work. See you next time.